Hey, future badass business owners, welcome back to the Start a Small Business Podcast, where each episode we will be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. And in today's episode, we are going to be talking about your brand and what your small business's brand is going to be. We are going to start going into a few episodes that have to do with marketing. And the first thing you got to understand is what is a brand? Now, please don't confuse marketing with branding. Marketing is what you do to let your people know about your business and how you're going to get more people into your business. Branding is what your customers will tell you your business is to them. The good thing is you get to help direct what people say about your business and what your brand is going to be. For example, over the years, McDonald's has had crafted a great brand. When I say McDonald's, something automatically popped into your head. Some people will think cheap and affordable food. Others will think it's gross and disgusting. Some people will think golden arches. Some people will see Ronald McDonald. Whatever it is, there are pieces of McDonald's that are seared into your brain as part of their brand. And McDonald's has a brand, you know that no matter where you go, you're going to have basically the same experience. They will have the golden arches and you are going to get the same food for the most part from location to location. Some might do it a little bit better than others, but overall, it's going to be the exact same experience no matter where you go, no matter what state, and in some cases, no matter which country. They have set out to create a brand that is consistent and that it stands for something. Now, how you interpret the brand is the second part of the branding question. So for example, I told you that some people think really positive thoughts from food standpoint of McDonald's and some people not as much. Now let's try another one. If I was to say Nike, once again, these people have built an amazing brand. Yes, they sell shoes and maybe that's what you thought about. But Nike has also created an experience and some loyal folks. Not everyone will wear Nikes, but they will have a brand in their head that still creates an emotional reaction to it. And by the way, Nike has some of the most loyal fans. These folks think about the experience that they have and the type of shoes that they know they're going to get. And some people are perfectly okay with spending all the money that Nike might cost them, while others are like, you know what, I see that brand, I understand it, but yeah, I'm still gonna go for the cheaper shoes. But I'll bet you even those that are buying the cheaper shoes can still communicate what the brand of Nike is. High-end cars have also done a great job with branding. They spend thousands of dollars on marketing, and trust me, they spend a lot of that money just to make sure that they're creating the best brand. They create a feeling that causes people that want to spend crazy amounts of money on cars that they do not really need. You'll notice that part of this whole branding thing is an emotional attachment. I can pretty much name any major business and you're gonna have a feeling that comes along with the name of the brand. When you think of your business, I want you to start thinking about what the, will people start saying about you? It is more than just that you sell X or that you can install X. What they are going to do is they're going to have a feeling about your business, a feeling about the customer service that you have, about the quality of the work that you do. When they're talking to their family and friends, what emotion are they going to be conveying? Yes, they're going to be telling people what it is that you did, but they're going to be doing it through the feeling that you make them have. How and what will they be communicating to others about your business? All pool cleaning people clean pools, but yet they are not all equal in the eyes of the community. Some have built better brands than others. It shows through how the community shares their experiences and feelings about that experience. And if you don't believe me, just hop online on Nextdoor or Facebook and just bring up one of those brands and start watching. And you're going to notice that they're going to say that someone did well or someone didn't do well, but you're going to also see and feel a lot of emotion of how well they make them feel loved by this business owner by taking care of whatever it is that they're doing for them. And by the way, just because you have a well-loved product or service, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to have a great brand. And I'm going to give you a quick example. If I was to say KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, what's the first thing that pops into your mind? 
Well, for typically, it's that they sell chicken. And some will say yummy chicken. And some people are going to say that's gross chicken. Some people are going to tell me about the kernel. And some people are going to talk about the bucket of chicken. All of that is true about the brand of KFC. This is part of their brand. However, if you say KFC in my community, you are going to get an earful. You will hear a wide range of what people are going to say. Our KFC has had terrible service for years and the brand has been tarnished due to poor management. Yes, they even run out of chicken on a regular basis. And if you think about it, it's the main piece of their brand. You go through the drive-thru or you go in and ask for chicken and they like they do not have it. That's how crazy and poorly run this business has been for years. Now this location hurts the big brand KFC on a much larger scale. Because think about it, these fast food joints in these places or these brands that have multiple locations are expecting their customers to get the same exact experience from town to town. And in our particular case, KFC local hurts the KFC big brand on a regular basis. But here's the thing. You're probably asking yourself, why are they still in business? Well, here's why. Because KFC has built such a strong brand and a taste that people know exactly what they're going to get from KFC. Every few months, they go back to our KFC with the intent of having the same experience they've had at every other KFC. And it's not until they get there that they have a completely different experience. And it reminds them why they haven't been going there. So the big brand doesn't realize that it's hurting their overall sales because they're losing out on tons of sales. But yet they don't understand because they continue to stay in business Obviously, they're doing something right. And that's just not true. It's the strong branding of the big KFC franchise that keeps this small one in place. But I can tell you that if this was just any other chicken place, they would have been out of business years ago. So I want you to ask yourself, what is your brand going to be? What are you going to be known for? So let's say you plan to start a dog grooming business. You are not just a dog groomer. We've already talked about the fact that you own a dog grooming business. So what emotions come to mind when people think of your dog grooming business? Do they think of great people that love on their dogs? Do they feel that you do a fantastic job with Rover and Princess? Or will they moan and groan about how traumatized their dog always seems to come back? Remember, in this particular field, they just want their babies to be well taken care of. And will your brand support that? Will your brand be above the others due to the little things that you do? Or maybe you're going to specialize in dogs with anxiety, and that is the brand you hope to create. Now, I want you to notice something. I never once talked about price. People are going to use your business if they feel they're getting a great brand, that they're getting the emotional needs met by what it is that you have to do. Price is secondary for a lot of people. Yes, there's always going to be people that chase the cheapest, but I promise you, they don't care about your brand and it doesn't matter. But honestly, they're the smallest piece of your business. Do not chase them. Now you can easily build a brand to be the cheapest, but I don't necessarily want you to be the cheapest. And by the way, if you're going for the cheapest, at least talk about being the most affordable instead of using the word cheap, because the word cheap is going to hurt your brand. So if you want to use affordable, I can give you that. Think about it. Just the word cheap versus affordable can bring up two very different emotions. Cheap means not just cheap price, but usually people associate that with cheap quality, cheap service, and just an overall bad experience. Where affordable doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to not get great customer service or even a great product. It just means you're going to get it at a great affordable price. Can you see the difference between the two? So as you can see, even the words the brand uses can make a huge difference. I want you to do an exercise. I want you to think about the different businesses in your community and what do people say about them. Do this exercise while you're thinking about your competition. What do people think about and say about them? I'll guarantee you there's people in your community that have built a really great brand and then there's others that have a horrible brand. Think about what they've done well and what they've done wrong and how are you going to use that information to help you build your brand? Because we want to make sure that you're communicating the brand you're trying to build from the very beginning. Matter of fact, grab a piece of paper and write down what you want your brand to be. What do you want your customers to be saying about you? Build what it is that you want it to be from the very beginning. Don't let it just happen because one day you may wake up and discover that you've built a brand that you had never planned on building. 
And after you're done with that exercise, head on over to the next episode because we're going to dive in more into marketing now. Because now that you know what your brand is going to be, it's time to start putting together a plan for the marketing of how you're going to let everybody in your community know that you're out there and you're ready for business. Don't forget to check out the startup guide in the show notes as well as the course. And I will see you on the next episode. Bye for now.